All right, Caleb. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. We got a little bit... We're actually pretty deep into a lot of the trees here, surprisingly. Dominate. Generates one less hunger. Iron Fist generates one less hunger. Oh, what a pity. I still can't do it. 65 modifier. That's so good. Can get this one at least. Walls of the Mind? I don't even use that. Yeah, presence. It's fine. Just put some in some random stuff. Sure, good with me. Stanford. He won't see me coming this time. Will he really not? Come to get my revenge. For you inflicting damage on my beautiful face. It's in better shape than the morgue. They didn't expect to have so many casualties. Disinfection in progress. Quiet. Tenalian Sergei, SAD Sergeant. Reasons for admission, multiple chest wounds. 9 p.m. Time of death. Next of kin, Madeline Tan Tenalian. The patient was struck with unusual force while walking down a narrow hallway. Yeah, this is their own hospital for people who have been hurt by vampires. Or hurt in the operations involving vampires, I should say. Hmm, they've gathered his things to send to his family. Will they also get a medal and a pat on the back? Lars Campbell. Liaison. Classified. Is there a person on the bed? I can hardly see. Yeah, there is. It's not the morgue here, though. <laughs> Gee, I can't guess which room Stanford might be in. Cecil, Mill, SAD agent. Partner's weapon was turned on him. Burns are superficial. The fracture is from the fall that followed this attack. I'm wasting my time here. Charles Griffin, concussion. First to enter the apartment. I don't want to die here. <laughs> uh, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, we we've got to go back. Uh, we have to. Just rest a little bit more. The Ivory Tower by Jason Bach. Now that you're stuck in bed for a while, you'll be able to read it. It's very interesting, and you'll see the end is incredible. Enjoy. Guys, just heal your wounds. It hurts like hell. <clears throat> but I showed them. Damn, your face is worse than mine. Don't worry, it'll heal, probably. Oh, man. And there's no metabolism going on in my body, I'm so that, that stuff on approval. my face will never heal. They've already lost many men. Robin Beck. Bullet wounds. Oh, death. Time of death. Oh, that's why the other ones were... They were dead already. Blank body turned his teammate's firearm on him. Thank 
Thank you. I will consume those coins. Don't you worry. Norman Steele, SAD Major. Thrown through a wall before being sprayed with bullets from an automatic weapon. You know what? Now would probably be a good time to put on the... Watch. We have enough willpower. Alexander Kaufman. Classified. If you showed this to a mem or Leisha, maybe they would feel a little bit bad, but it's Galob. He doesn't care. Condemned. May she take her research to the grave. Kiara Favarone. Hemorrhage of the right radial artery. Lost large quantity of blood before admission. Patient unconscious. Dead. She died instantly. L. Gallagher. Pyre manager. Severe burns. Father Joseph would have been here. He's smart. He's gone. An annotated Bible. It belongs to Walter Stanford. Hmm. He's done his own translations of whole passages that deal with the power of faith. Sounds like someone's trying to understand his own abilities. Theologist. There is an unspeakable power that seems to emanate from certain human beings. By learning about Stanford and the true faith, Galeb increases understanding of the human mind, plus one psychology. Hmm. Did we come here already? All the rooms look the same. I can almost smell his presence. Chris, can you hear me? Oh, shit, he was answering. No. <coughs> can you call for someone? Chris! Ron Pickford. Agent was not wearing head protection, suffered a mental manipulation that forced him to attack his brothers at arm, who were forced to incapacitate him. You're lucky they didn't kill you. I need morphine. Look at what happened with Halsey, all those people. I don't know if I'll make it through the night. Chris Miles. Squad member with a damaged helmet shot at our men, killing two of them instantly. Chris disarmed him? Oh, and then he lost consciousness. So this is the kind of person where if he recovered, he would be sent to that previous area where people Chris. deal with the nightmares that stem from being involved with vampires. There's no next of kin. Maybe his wife or girlfriend. I need morphine. I feel like they're trying to make me feel bad. It's kind of working. Like it's it works on me. But I feel like it wouldn't work on Galeb. They're spending a lot of time showing me all the awful things that we've been doing. They're humanizing the humans. Really. Hmm. The dog didn't do things halfway. While on prison duty, the lycanthrope attacked him and threw him against the wall. Evan Hart. Multiple fractures. Please, help me. Help me. I know I'm gonna die. They won't say it to my face, but I know it. How do you want me to help you? William Korshank. Perforation of the left lung. Caught and held by the lycanthrope before being rescued unconscious by his teammates. I've never seen anything like it. An enormous beast. I don't know how I'm still alive. 
Yeah, you were saying the lycanthrope doesn't do things halfway, but there's two alive people here. They're just injured. Not even dead. The list of prescriptions is long. They still hope they can save him. Maybe they'll be dead soon enough. I'm so tired. Go to bed, mister. Wake up tomorrow and you'll feel better. Or maybe you won't even wake up. Who knows? 50-50. Nope. Ready? innocent lives did you take to get here? It's time to put an end to this. I would be impressed if I wasn't so tired of all this. This time, you're alone. You can't harm me. None of your kind can. I forbid you to come any closer. My faith is my shield. To be able to turn us away like that, that's a rare gift for a mortal. Some of us don't even believe it's possible. You have failed. Not yet. You're not infallible. As long as I have God on my side, I will be. I'll break you. You and your faith. A touch of bravado. Now that you're cornered, nothing can stop us. You're done for. That's a long confrontation. I'll save the Iron Fist. The hunger for Iron Fist. It's the beginning of the confrontation, though. We won't disappear without a fight. The war is already won. We've proven we're much more powerful than you. You took us by surprise, but now we've been warned. The battle will be long. Resistant, like cockroaches. Unlike you, we have all of eternity before us. Your pitiful efforts to reach me won't change a thing. What's your plan here? To put a stop to you. By killing me. We are Legion. Killing one of us won't make the rest of us vanish into thin air. The watch putting in good work. Then I won't stop until you're all dead. You are tenacious. Worse, nothing can stop me. A creature of pure destruction. I have seen the consequences of your crimes. I have dried orphan's tears, tended to gaping wounds, calmed tormented minds. You spread your plague like rats. You feed off the human race. You're nothing but parasites. I know technically we're allowed two misses, but this is such an important one that I feel like I want to do the best I can. And make sure that we really pummel this guy. Hey, now would be the time to use it, right, Quentin King's Vite? <laughs> Not sure what it does. No, we'll go for the full. The full domination. Why leave it to chance? I am an old vampire. I leave nothing to chance. At least I don't deny my true nature. I know what I am. A creature superior to you mortals. But we're not just talking about humans here. You profane the very earth with your presence. 
From the shadows, you manipulate the fates of civilizations. You bring famines. You stoke wars. You seek to take control of the entire world. And you'll be the cause of its ruin. And what about you? You live in secrecy. You lie to those you feign to protect. No government dares stand up to you. But we're doing nothing more than defending them. For now. But that's how tyrants are born. You're no better than us. I smell nothing but destruction in your wake. What would you have me do? Faced with a creature stripped of all emotion who sees you as nothing more than cattle. I've lost count of the number of dead bodies and broken lives. Fire is the only path to redemption, down to the very last. I read the letter. There are some who want to use us. I want to see the trait that we just got. I think it's from drinking the Quentin King blood. Where is it? Oh, it's all the way back here. Voice of a time gone by, temporary trait. Minus one hunger, generator predominate. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. That may be what you believe, but there are others who disagree. What? The head of the SAD thinks he can use us to his advantage. And he's not the only one. Like so many terrorists moved like pawns on a geopolitical chessboard. I will never let that happen. It's above your pay grade, and you know it. I... must try. In the end, only one question remains. Why do you continue to fight when the outcome is already decided? Your demise is inevitable. Why do you refuse to accept it? Oh my god, it's grayed out. You can struggle. It's the natural order of things. The fight will only heighten my primal instincts. No creature can resist the Almighty. I am here for only one thing. I am a monster. Your predator. That's impossible. You're my prey, a sheep that has become separated from his flock. I'm hunting you. I'm going to show you the price you must pay if you come after me. This is impossible. Now, you will die. Stay back! Deus meus. Why? I actually do wonder why. Is it just a simple case of Caleb's powers being too overwhelming? Stanford had true faith, but it wasn't good enough. Richard, what are you doing here? Hazel sent me. I'll take over from here. She planned for- <gasps> You best go back to see her. What do we do about him? I'll take, I'll take care of him. Tell her, Tell her the SI is under is control. Under control. <gasps> Good work. Good work, Caleb. Richard, make sure you're the same height as Stanford, otherwise people will know. <laughs> Remember that one scene? The first scene that we saw him, he was so tall. Next to Leisha. Oh, you know what? I have to say, like, this is... This is a fantastic climax so far. Like, all- every single scene has been, like, knocking it out of the park. Making me go through all the bugginess and whatnot, worth it. I really feel like it. You put an end to Stanford. You increased your understanding about Stanford's strange powers. I really like this confrontation, actually. 
I felt for the humans though, maybe because I am a human, but going through the hospital rooms, going through that previous therapy room and then Stanford, I do feel for what they're saying, but from my perspective as a vampire, I am a predator, I hunt, and you are my prey. And that's the eternal struggle. It's been a long night. The prince impatiently awaits the outcome of her plan, which will determine the future of Boston. 4.30 in the morning. Again? What, still? Maybe I gotta go against the prince. Hmm. Plus one. Prevents your opponent from focusing a skill. Well, the, th the Thin Blood Watch is the same thing. Still can't get this. Iron Fist generates one less. Eh. Wait, what did I get a modifier in just now? This one? Rhetoric? Sure. Doesn't really matter at this point. Why am I still taking it seriously? <laughs> I wanted to thank you. Everything ended well, thanks to you. It's not over yet. You're right. But I won't forget what you did on Long Island, and I wanted to make sure you knew it. Did you have any trouble getting back to Boston? The hound you unleashed made things a lot easier. I was nothing next to him. I got off easier than you did. I'll recover. <laughs> As always. Now that we're both safely free of that mess, I have a question for you. It's about Fang. Oh, you're interested in my opinion now? Or are you afraid of how the prince will react? You said it yourself. There's no point in repeating past mistakes. I can't make any promises, but I'll put in a word for you. Thank you. With your help, my head should stay planted on my shoulders a little while longer. That all depends on you. I know. I embraced Feng for the wrong reasons. But we also need to discuss her future. You brought her here, so the choice is yours to make. What are we going to do with her? Disappear? As in kill her? Oh, I kind of like this option. It's very bittersweet. I'm raising a protege and then... She gets taken away. Nothing I can do about it, but let her go. You embraced her. She's no longer my responsibility. Make sure that she serves the interests of the Camarilla as best she can. I will. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, not at all. You've come at just the right time. <sighs> this will always be awkward. We'll be done in just a moment. You made it back in one piece, Caleb. We carry success in our blood. He's the reason we're all still standing here tonight. If it's so bittersweet looking at Shu Feng. Do you remember the very first scene? I was feeding on her and it felt very like intimate and stuff. I like to think probably there was a little bit, um, maybe, a little bit of love in there, and then now my heart is broken. <laughs> I'm not sure. I would have liked to tear Stanford apart myself. Whatever. Now we can focus on the future. What do you have in mind? 
We need to recover from this attack and make sure it won't happen again. We'll have our hands full. Ah, who knows? Maybe we'll have ourselves a good old witch hunt or a turf war. For someone who knows how to manipulate their pawns, it's the perfect way to increase their influence. Can you, like, are you gonna stop with that whole being ambitious and unethical stuff, or are you gonna go back to that stuff? It almost sounds like you find all of this amusing. I'm looking forward to my future profits, that's all. You used to enjoy it too, once upon a time. That was long ago. Many things have changed since then. So, you're still part of this world? That's not for you to decide. You still have a part to play, my dear sire. It's up to you to choose whether you'll be sitting in the front row or standing in the back. What are you planning to do now? Very poetic to just... Ah, oh, I'm sick of being a vampire. I don't find any joy, any sadness, any emotion. I just want to... Um, leave. But there's the implication that the beckoning probably brings about death, right? Like final death. Oh, I don't know if I can bear for Galeb to do that either. Although, poetically, I kind of like the thought of it. Maybe we'll we'll look at both of them. Yeah. Ugh, but canonically, my canonical Galeb... I, feel, I do feel like he's sick of this shit, <laughs> but... I also feel like he would be, with his unwavering loyalty, continue to stay here. I can't leave the court. It is my duty to stay and help the prince. You haven't changed. We'll see about that. Neither have you. I'm so sad we never got a proper conversation between me and her. Especially after she got embraced. I raised you like my own daughter. How could you? How could you? Eh. Where's Hazel? Uh, Ma'am, thank God you're here. When I found out that Hazel had sent you out there, I really thought that... Oh, are you alright? You're not hurt? I don't know what to say. Especially because we know... things now. No, you're all worked up over nothing. I'm fine. Not over nothing. It was a suicide mission. I know. The Anarchs didn't make it out. What are you mm. talking about? Randall Thane. The Anarchs. They helped me on Long Island. But they were all destroyed. You're back. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Listen, I know it's not a good time, but we need to talk. Come back to my rooms with me. What for? Not here, ma'am. I'll tell you more once we're there. It's... important. And personal. Are you coming? Oh, this could be bad. Does she know that I know? Let's see. Alright, I'm coming. But she loves me. Well, we got some empty seats on the Primogen now. Do you want me to ask Sylvia to send up a vessel? You must be starving. I don't want anything from you. Excuse me? Jara Drory. She was there, you know. She told them everything. Everything. I don't understand a word of what you're saying. It's been a long night. You should get some rest. I know what you did! Yeah. 
You and Drory, you sold your asses to the humans. You wanted to wipe us out. You gave them everything about Hazel, the council, the whole fucking court. And then you threw your accomplice under the bus. You really have no fucking honor. You disgust me. M.M. And what for? Power? Were you planning to rule Boston? Is that why you got rid of Jara? You wanted to keep the throne all to yourself? You don't understand. I don't. It was a necessary sacrifice. You know what I mean. You did the same thing to those Anarchs. That was different. It's true. What I did, I did for you. For us. You got some fucking nerve. I had a debt. The SI. My back was up against the wall. I had to do something. Oh. And for Jar too? You had to do something? She wanted to destroy you. I'm protecting you, ma'am. Like I've been doing since the very beginning. I believe that. I believe that. Because if she didn't really think that, she wouldn't write me as the person on her inheritance on her will. What? So she did all this because... In selling out all this information to the humans, they'll wipe out the vampires, but not her? If they see you, they'd wipe you out too. And if you weaken the vampires' position, you're putting yourself at risk too, aren't you? It's not very clear to me what the, the actual, like, objective is of what she's doing just for power. But you're, you're wiping out your own power at the same time by letting all the other vampires die. What debt? What debt are you talking about? I'd rather not talk about it. Believe me, the less you know, the better. No! No! I've had enough of your bullshit. You're going to own up to what you've done. <sighs> Do you remember when we first came to Boston? Of course. It was during World War II. France had surrendered, and Quentin King refused our request for asylum. You were afraid. So I asked the London court for help. They agreed to help me with King, on one condition. My eternal loyalty. They didn't ask much. They even left me alone for 80 years. What happened? Then London fell. The last bastion of the British Camarilla. Now that it's gone, they're going to need a new domain. They ordered me to prepare it for them. They're coming. Wow, okay, so you're just selling out the Boston people to make way for the British. Okay. There are cities up and down the coast. Why did it have to be Boston? It was one of the first British colonies. The English kindred lived here for a long time. You know that. You knew a few of them well. Yes, I remember. Even if the elders aren't here anymore, there's still a sizable British presence in Boston. But they're in hiding. There's nothing more to say. Boston's got all the makings of the ideal haven. History. Contacts. That's it. Is it really just about convenience then? This isn't a confrontation. Yeah. I know your network. You must have allies here. Why bring our enemies into this? I was... trapped. I might have support here, but nobody measures up to Iverson. There weren't enough of us, and the British are coming soon. I had to find a solution. Wow. You're afraid of them. The British, I mean. Why? I know what they're capable of. Bad thing about living eternally, huh? All your debts and grudges and all that, they'll never get wiped out. I think I have quite a bit of... Oh yeah, we're fine. Did Jar know? Yes. She'd been working with them for a long time, well before we got here. I didn't want to destroy her. But she went too far. She got what she deserved. Whoa. Listen to me. Things are going to change in Boston now. And fast. Hazel will fall, as will all those who support her. What? 
Are you planning to destroy everyone? Not me. No. Your British friends. All that for a goddamn throne. You know me better than that. Honestly? I don't think I do. I don't care about Boston. I know you have questions, and I know you don't believe me. But you have to trust me. Let the storm pass over, Mem. Nothing will happen to you. You want me to betray Hazel? You don't owe her anything. I can't see a mem or somebody, like if we get a choice later on, like Gaelic. Oh, do you want to stay with the court or whatever? I can't see her staying here. After the Anarchs, after all this crap and... We just dealt with the SI and now we gotta worry about the British. What kind of storm? The kind that will wipe out this city. But I can protect you. I can give us a fresh start. I don't want Do you. you. Trust me. I don't want you. No, this is a no, but do I want to report her or just quit? You know what? Screw the politics. Screw the primogen seed. The Anarchs are gone. Nobody's depending on me to get the primogen seed so that they'll be protected or whatever. I quit. I don't care. I'm tired, Hilda. I'm leaving. I see. I'm sorry. Don't do that. It's too late. Oh! Seriously? <laughs> Holy! Ooh! This is the most well animated fight sequence in the entire game. I taught you well. Hilda, please! <laughs> This is sad in a way, too. Once lovers, now this. Oh! Oh! So this is really it then? You made your choice! And then! Oh my god, really? Oh! Is that made of special material? That steak thingy? Oh! Don't be. She brought it upon herself. Disasters bring out the best and the worst in us. They can plunge us into oblivion or signal the start of a golden age. Tonight will go down in history as the night we were able to prove we're not done yet. We showed that if we stand by our beliefs, if we fight to protect the masquerade from the shadows, nothing is impossible. The mortals were unable to break us thanks to our resilience. We never doubted our superiority over those weak creatures for a moment. Kind of feels sad for Gala. Sacrifices were necessary. Our domain was violated and our existence threatened. But this is nothing compared to everything we have lost. Our family has been battered. The blood of our servants flowed like water. Our own kind were decimated in the flames. We will never forget them. 
We had to establish new agreements, forge new alliances, because this is how we strengthen our kind. Oh, Shu Fang! Now that our reunification has been confirmed, now you're we here. We can count on strong allies who will help us secure our blood supply. Our old quarrels belong to the past. The trifles that separated us have been forgotten. Only one truth remains. Our supremacy. Never again shall we be weak or disunited. That's what the mortals expect from us. Let us show them why we are the predators and they are. Let us show them who their blood belongs to. Let us show them the power of immortality. The sacrifices are not over yet. Some will be lost. Others will lose what they have. But it will not be in vain. We are hunters, and what is taken from a hunter must be repaid a hundredfold. Our eternal nature is our greatest strength. Boston has shown that it is stronger than old London and venerable Vienna. Tonight, we have tasted vengeance. Tonight, a sea of blood will flow. A spirit of harmony. Against all odds, the unification of the Harvard Chantry and the Boston Camarilla was secured through the efforts of M.M. Lewis. The two organizations are now working together with the hope of making history. However, there is still a long way to go in their quest for stabilized blood that will revolutionize the challenging issue of the kindred's blood supply. For now, the priority is to elude the Second Inquisition. Yo, these guys never even showed up until the very end. I thought they were gonna help us out, but no. I guess our alliance only extends as far as the whole blood supply issue. But they're vampires too, they should care about the SI. Holy corruption. Thanks to a MEMS computer virus, the data at Long Island base has been corrupted. Without this painstakingly gathered information on the blank bodies, the SAD is forced to shut down Operation Swansong. It will be years before the SAD is once again able to hunt Kindred in New England. Oh. What happened to Leisha? Leisha and Halsey just. Oh. Well, wasn't this exactly how we began? In some dinky little apartment? We're together now, for real. Yeah, they've definitely left the Camarilla. Not even a choice. Okay, so after that the credits roll, but before we look at that, probably let's take a look at some of the other choices here. Beryl taking care of Shu Fang, or Fang must disappear. She'll disappear. She is no longer of any use. She could become problematic. She needs to disappear. I'll let you take care of that. My pleasure. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, not at all. You've come at just the right time. Oh, that's so ominous. The same sentence, but... Ugh. We'll be done in just a moment. You made it back in one piece, Caleb. We carry success in our blood. He's the reason we're all still standing here tonight. Thank you, Beryl. I would have liked to tear Stanford apart myself. I kind of felt bad though, just looking at how... Okay, we don't get to choose anything about Leisha. Leisha just leaves. She doesn't care about anything anymore. Richard betrayed us, Hazel doesn't care about us, so we're like, you know what? We'll just take our daughter and go somewhere else. And then we made a mem decide to leave. But Caleb still staying in the court feels kind of sad. I almost want to make him just go to the beckoning. He might have been mortal, but he was able to resist our power. 
<laughs> he didn't resist you for long. We all could have gone up in flames. It's all ancient history now. Now we can focus on the future. What do you have in mind? We need to recover from this attack and make sure it won't happen again. We'll have our hands full. Recover, huh? Ah, who knows? Maybe we'll have ourselves a good old witch hunt or a turf war. For someone who knows how to manipulate their pawns, it's the perfect way to increase their influence. Meryl back to his old stuff. It sounds like you've got it all planned out. Oh, nothing set in stone yet, but I see new opportunities that are going to take shape, and I'm not going to sit idly by and watch them slip away. You're the one who taught me that. Have you forgotten? That was long ago. Many things have changed since then. So, you're still part of this world? That's not for you to decide. You still have a part to play, my dear sire. It's up to you to choose whether you'll be sitting in the front row or standing in the back. What are you planning to do now? I'm literally too old for this. I feel so sad about Xu Feng, though. Hmm. She'll get destroyed, I'll go to the beckoning. Beryl can just keep expanding his influence. I'm leaving. Really? It's not really a choice. There's nothing left for me here. The coming battles are not mine to fight. So, this is how it ends. It's been far too long. Don't make the same mistakes I did, Beryl. Has he been holding back that urge the whole time then? I guess so. Oh man, I wish- I really wish we got to talk a little bit more here. Shu Fang. Do you trust me? No. I'm sorry. You've gone way too far. I have to tell Hazel. You should go. I see. I'm sorry. Don't do that. It's too late. Oh, she's gonna attack me again. I see. Hilda? Yo, Mem's voice actress really did a banging job here, though. This whole scene of her yelling at Hilda, it's pretty intense. This fighting part is really well animated. In a lot of games, you often see that sometimes the combat is very floaty. Even if they're doing the right moves, it just doesn't feel like it has weight. But here, watching this, I don't get that feeling at all. It's very weighty. I feel like I can feel the impact. I really like it. I'm sorry. It's really heartbreaking because from the whole Will thing, I do believe that Hilda does love me, but not enough to... Like, she loves herself more. If I was gonna threaten her... her uh, status as being alive or unliving, then she's still gonna kill me all the same. But... Can I trust you? Don't fuck me over. Never. Alright. I should go see Hazel. I know. I'll meet up with you later. M.M. Thank you. Oh, that's it? She just accepts it? And then... Disasters bring the out the speech best again. and the worst in us. They can plunge us into oblivion or signal the start of a golden age. Tonight will go down in history as the night we were able to prove we're not done yet. Many sacrifices were necessary. Our domain was violated and our existence threatened. But this is nothing compared to everything we have lost. Our family has been battered. The blood of our servants flowed like water. Our own kind were decimated in the flames. Oh, this is a little bit different. We will never forget them. Those who fought Caleb by left for the side beckoning? and who quenched their thirst for the blood of these mortals. 
Yeah, we now didn't see the scene of a mem going to the elevator. Confirmed. We can count on strong allies who will help us secure our blood supply. Our old quarrels belong to the past. The trifles that separated us have been forgotten. Only one truth remains. Our supremacy. Never again shall we be weak or disunited. That's what the mortals expect from us. Let us show them why we are the predators and they are the prey. Let us show them who their blood belongs to. Let us show them the power of immortality. The sacrifices are not over yet. Some will be lost. Others will lose what they have. But it will not be in vain. We are hunters, and what is taken from a hunter must be repaid a hundredfold. Sires, children, servants, all will remind mankind of its rightful Just barrel, place no Shu Fang. At the bottom of the food chain. Our eternal nature is our greatest strength. Boston has shown that it is stronger than old London and venerable Vienna. Tonight, we have tasted vengeance. Tonight, a sea of blood will flow. Oh, okay. This is a little bit different. If we send Caleb to the beckoning, I guess. It doesn't mention the Harford Chantry. Yeah, the Harford Chantry thing wasn't mentioned. The successful alliance. The return of the Redcoats. The events of recent days were not a coincidence. Despite her best efforts, the prince was never able to identify the traitor, still lurking within the Boston court. A few weeks later, the cargo ship Cautus, chartered by the Cotopodus Company, Ah, oh, arrived in Boston Harbor. Hidden aboard the ship in containers were members of the British Camarilla, who had escaped the Second Inquisition in England. That's what Cotopodus is. Oh my gosh. With the help of the trader, their landing went smoothly. Their plan was simple. To replace the Boston Camarilla in an area the hunters believed to have purified. Strong, organized, and with a surprise attack, they easily overcame the last of the already weakened kindred, who were left with only one choice. Submit or be destroyed. Control of the Boston Domain, or what's left of it, is now completely in British hands, while the Second Inquisition is already busy looking elsewhere. <laughs> right after Hazel made that long speech about how, oh yeah, we're, we will rise, and then the next second, the British come and take everything over. <laughs> Collateral damage. Since the Harvard Chantry was not part of the new rulers' plans, a struggle between the two organizations began. With the element of surprise on their side, the newcomers managed to drive out the Tremere and force them to disperse. T for two. Hilda was rewarded for her crucial role in the British takeover of Boston, and Mem's existence was tolerated, but she struggled to be accepted by the new court, which did not take her seriously. Her cabarets quickly failed due to a lack of customers, which means Hilda and Mem are probably gonna break up again. Are you coming? No, because you're probably gonna... Two out of three times you want to try to kill me. No, thank you. Sorry, I have to go report back to the prince. Hazel can wait. It's important. No. Fine. Suit yourself. So we just directly jump to them. Bring mm. the best and the worst in us. They can plunge us into oblivion or signal the start of a golden age. Tonight will go down in history as the night we were able to prove we're not done yet. We demonstrated that our ability to adapt oh. and change are and the keys primagency. to our domination. Okay, the rest of the speech was the exact same pretty much. The night has come. So it looks like maybe about 90% of the speech is set in stone, and then 
It's modular depending on your choices for Galeb and Amem. In short, if Amem reports Hilda to the prince, then we can stop the British Camarilla invasion. But if not, then they come over and they take over Hazel's seat and the entire court basically. Pretty brutal considering how we just fought off the SI too. And it's like we fought off the SI for the British, so that kind of that kind of sucks. Not sure if Galeb going to the beckoning really affects the court in any way. Well, he won't be here to uh, defend the prince, that's for sure. And yeah, we saw some alternate endings here, but I have no doubt in my mind that there was probably some alternate ones that were determined by things previous to the scene. Like if we killed Richard or not, if we were successful in uploading the virus or not. Like I mentioned before, this game might stumble in some areas, but having actually different branching storylines is probably not one of them. In fact, I would say on this entire market of all the choice-driven games that I've played, the council was pretty up there in terms of actual different choices. And here, now I can't confirm it without actually playing it again, but I get the feeling that it's probably the same situation too. So yeah, lots of different choices can be had here. We've seen a selection of them, which, um, well, Leisha... Maybe we could have gone a different ending for Leisha if we didn't rescue Halsey. But it's a, it's pretty not happy for anybody, really. And I feel like that's sort of the theme here. The whole vampire, the masquerade setting. It's not going to be like, yay, we defeated all the humans and now we're good. Or yay, the humans defeated all the vampires. It's always going to be like, okay, we want some here, but then we lost some there. The Anarchs probably didn't have to die if I didn't bring them with me. But because we did that, I feel like it's kind of thematically appropriate too, because, you know, you win some, you lose some. I'm so curious about Richard too, now that he's become the new Stanford basically. What, what would have happened if I killed Richard before as Leisha and then he wouldn't be able to become the new Stanford? So the SI would know that Stanford died. And then how would they react to it? Who knows? Just thinking about it, there's a lot of different possibilities here. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, like, it was... You know, this game, playing this game was pretty rough on multiple ends, all the game bugs and the resets and all that. But by the end here, that climax section was so good. I loved it. It was stressful, but it was really good to finally watch everything come together. Although the actual ending, like the prince's speech and the ending consequences, I do wish we got a little bit more elaboration. Especially stuff like learning that the British Camarilla were the ones behind the spy stuff, but we got like one singular conversation about it at the end here. Wish we had a bit more. And then the Hartford Chantry. I really thought they were gonna do more with them here, but we just, we negotiated the alliance and they never showed up again until the end. Like what, what was the whole thing for then? But again, for the most part, this ending bit was just really, really good. So I feel like all is forgiven. <laughs> all is forgiven. Well, is it all forgiven? Maybe not everything. Like, I, I personally found it enjoyable enough, and if we go back to the council a little bit, I mentioned before that I really like the council, which is part of why I, I'm playing this game now. And part of why I like the council was because I did think there was some pretty cool gameplay innovation, but the council's story, the narrative, I completely did enjoy it from like an ironic point of view where I thought parts of it were so bad it's good, because it was just entertaining. But for Swan Song, I was unironically just really into the story the whole time. Leisha, Galeb, Mem, I feel like all of these were pretty engaging and they all brought different things to the table in terms of, oh, like what parts of Vampire the Masquerade do we want to explore today? Having the World of Darkness setting to begin with, as opposed to crafting a completely new world, probably helped. But either way, Leisha's story about how her sire is actually her biological child, or Mem's story about her struggling with fitting into the Camarilla because honestly, her personality might be a little bit more anarchy and she seemed to get along with them as well. And then Galeb, Galeb being the oldest vampire here, having to heed to the, the call of the beckoning, but also wanting to serve the court and then the whole relationship between him and Beryl and Xu Feng. Mm, I really wish we got to see more there. Galeb and Beryl's story, like, I feel like 80% of it was hidden in the codex. I can completely imagine how some people who didn't read the Codex would be like, what the hell is this? Like, I don't care about Beryl and Galeb. Beryl's an asshole, just kill him, whatever. But because we did read it, we know that Beryl is, uh, oh, he's the son of a sugar trade company, and Galeb was his mentor, and he really just wanted his sire's attention the whole time. He was just a lonely boy, okay? He's not, he's not that bad. Okay, maybe that part was a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on here. 
I think you can tell that they developed the story and the world a lot more than they actually got to show in the gameplay of the game by looking not just in the codex, which I mean a lot of them were like 20 pages long already, but just so many characters. Yeah, like uh, back in the, the court we had April and Journey and all those people at the front desk and the bartender. I feel like this could be a positive and a negative. Positive because it makes the world feel more alive because there's just people everywhere. But negative because a lot of these people will just never get developed. Like Journey. I thought Journey, judging by the first scene, she would show up more, but no, we just either clear her of the accusations of being the one to cause a code red alert or she didn't cause it. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I think this is, um... I know this game got pretty poor reviews. Hold on, let me just look up the scores on Open Critic here. It got an average of 67, and 30% of critics recommend it. Mm. Do I disagree with the score? Not necessarily. Which might be surprising because I just talked about how much I liked it, but I really feel like there are certain things... Okay, I'm overlooking a lot of things about it because I enjoy certain other things. I like to think I'm a pretty lenient person in terms of like uh, dealing with bugs. I'm pretty patient about stuff like that, but even like this game got to me a few times because there was just so many random little bugs here and there. Aside from bugs though, because those things aren't intended. Uh, the facial animation and just the animation in general is pretty bad. I don't think anyone will argue against that. And the level of dialogue writing I feel like is pretty middling most of the time too. It has an objective, it does the job, but it's not particularly nuanced, which for a game about manipulation and deceit and political intrigue and all that, would be nice if it was a tad more nuanced. And the performance of the voice acting, sometimes it's pretty good, but then sometimes not so much. I think how much enjoyment you'll get out of it probably just is determined by how tolerant you are towards these things. Personally, all the bad things I mentioned here don't really bother me all that much. My main focus is the, the very, very core story. Even stripping away stuff like, you know, level of dialogue writing or the, the voice acting. Just the, the core narrative. Like, for example, it might have been kind of clunky, but I really enjoyed the ending sections with Galeb there where we were poking a little bit deeper into the effects of vampires and supernatural creatures on humans, on human society, and how we've been really harming them. Because even though we're playing as a vampire, it doesn't mean that whatever we do is right. It's right for us, but we might actually be being very awful to all non-vampires. Mm -hmm. In general, the gameplay was a pretty big plus for me too. All the different ways you can solve a puzzle, especially because games in this genre generally don't have this much freedom. So I can feel, I feel the love of this team. They put their hearts into making this game and I can feel it. And sometimes I feel like maybe that's the most important thing here. Somebody has put a lot of passion and soul into making something for the world and as a consumer, as a person consuming this product, I can feel that it's gone across to me. All this to say, I enjoyed Swan Song. It might have had problems, it might have had ups and downs, but I really enjoyed playing it. I don't regret playing it at all. And I feel pretty confident about saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to play any game that this team, Big Bad Wolf, puts out in the future too. If they can tighten up and really polish their next game, no bugs, all that, I feel like it has the potential to be really, really good. If you've made it this far into me playing Swan Song and me talking about Swan Song, then hopefully you feel similarly as well. And I hope to see you back here whenever their next game comes out. With that said, this was Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song with Wellens. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it. And I hope to see you all back here in another place, in another time. Bye!